Welcome to Citizens Insight, the Citizens Party's interview series with people on matters of national importance. And today I'm joined by John Dalson, our special guest, to discuss the dairy industry. Welcome, John. Thank you. Now, this is actually an anniversary, as it happens, John. Um, Ten years ago last week was the fateful decision by Coles one of the two big retailers in Australia, dropped the price of milk to a dollar a litre. And that set off the milk wars that for the next um, six or seven years had milk being sold at the retail level at, in the supermarkets at a dollar a litre. And that has had repercussions. Now, John, last year you intervened in the discussion about what's gone wrong with the dairy industry and you wrote a comprehensive report detailing the need for re-regulation, which... We had you on our show last year to talk about. Um, we want to go through some of that again and what's happened since. So just please recap, in your view, the severity of the crisis that we're dealing with in the dairy industry. Well, the fact is that the sector is contracting uh, and more and more people are exiting. Uh, and it was once uh, a vital uh, export sector of Australia. Um, and there's no suggestion that the efficiency of the sector has fallen. Um, but there are a number of factors uh, why this has happened, and one of them is the $1 milk, but yeah. not exclusively so. So we, we won't probably do justice to your whole report because it's 100 pages or more, um, but well, what's your proposal? Well, it's, it's more than 100 uh, pages. There was some ancillary uh, reports that went went to that that developed themes that uh, came out of questions that people asked me, um, and uh, it, 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 given it's a broad canvas, I, I think I've tried uh, probably to cover a whole range of things and try to bring uh, a whole lot of uh, dissident issues together. Yeah. Um, and uh, in, in in the process, I think there are some areas that. Uh, I could have been more explicit. What's your, what's your... My basic theory is that Australian milk is some of the most is about the cheapest milk in the world by far. And when you look at the countries that we are competing with, most of them are heavily subsidised in one way or other. Sometimes it's explicit. Sometimes it is not. So my problem is that a lot of the issues could be solved if the price of milk was lifted. The question is, how do you, how do you go about it? Yeah. And no one so far has been able to produce a solution which is universally accepted. I developed this concept of uh, unfair transfer payments where um, where the supermarkets would be forced to pay a certain amount extra, anything up to 40 cents, direct to farmers, yep. not via processors, um, which would have given farmers about 13 cents extra for their milk, which would have made a lot of them more viable. Now, since I suggested that, um, with the current pricing your book by the processors, uh, that's been halved. So the benefit would now be down to six cents. But my problem about the sector is, um, is that it is structurally unsound. But you have 5,000 odd dairy farmers selling to a handful of processors who in turn sell to a, a duopoly. Coles and, and the natural phenomenon that flows from that limited choice is such that dairy farmers will always be always be disadvantaged. Yeah. Now, the approach that government's taken, and, and it, it is, has been worthwhile, is to go down the course of a code of conduct. And they've done that, and they've made it mandatory. And what that has essentially done is to control the behaviour between the processes and the dairy farmers. Now, in a recent ACCC inquiry, um, 
they want to tighten it up further after a bit more experience and also to embrace the retailers either through the dairy code or a special code. In addition to that, the ACCC are not suggesting, are not suggesting any structural changes, but they're suggesting that we look at provisions that exist in the US and UK of harmful effects. Now, what that's like is introducing another head of behaviour that's prohibited under the competition law. Now, given the problems we had introducing section 46, which deals with intent and the effects test, which took enormous battle, the probability of getting through parliament some provisions about harmful effects, in my view, is close to zero. Second, as I've said, you cannot solve this problem by behavioural constraints as in codes of conduct. What my solution did, it went to the core issue, which was forcing the retailers to pay an appropriate price. Now, John, before, that, in John, a sense, John, before, is a form of regulation, and I accept that. Yeah. John, before we continue, I'd just like you to explain to the viewer this issue, this competition issue of um, effect versus intention, because you were involved in that fight. Just explain to the viewer what that means, what you're referring to there. Well, under the old Section 46 provision, um, it provided that you had to intend to do something. You had to intend to have an anti-competitive effect. Now, the difficulty about that is that's highly subjective. Yeah. So it was very difficult for the OCCC to sheet home in the courts um, any uh, failures because of the problem, the huge problems of the bur burden of fruit, uh, uh, proof, I should say. So what they did was to change the legislation to say it only had to have an effect. In other words, you didn't have to prove intent or motive. If the effect was anti-competitive, then uh, there was there was an issue, and the it strengthened considerably section forty six, but it was a huge fight because all the big companies fought it, the BCA, and uh, it was a fluke in a sense that we finally succeeded in getting it through. Now, when you talk about adding two more heads of power in the trade practice, in the competition law about harmful effects, um, you're re revisiting the same issues. But with harmful effects, um, that would apply right throughout the community, not just to dairy or not just to agriculture, which means you're going to generate a whole new raft of people that are going to be fighting it. Um, and I can't see it getting into Parliament with the current government. So Where would it get up with Labor? I, d I, don't, I don't know. So, so the notion so John, of the problem of the dairy is solved by some new legislation along these lines is, in my view, an absolute pipe dream. Yeah, and so your, your, argument is, is, your argument is that approach, the government's preferred approach to change the law is... Very impractical because it's such a big fight. There's no guarantee we'll succeed. Whereas it doesn't actually, it and it only ever address, it can only address behaviour anyway. Whereas That's the right. problem, the problem is a structural one. It is a pipe dream because behaviour is only one aspect of what's wrong. Yeah. Um, and the supermarkets can behave quite appropriately, but dairy farmers still be disadvantaged. Yes. Because of the because of the imbalance in power and the lack of choice. Now, for dairy farmers, the lack of choice with processors is even greater because a processor has to be within a geographical reach yep. of a dairy farmer. So that further limits the people they can sell to. Uh, and my view is, unless the government face up to the structural issue, it will never ever be solved. And from the government's point of view, they can simply hide behind the the A triple three report. So a forty cent um, per litre levy on the retailers to give to the farmers would rebalance that structural imbalance. 
Well, it'll, it will give the, the, the farmer another 13.3 uh, cents. Yeah. But with the pricing that they've been recently been getting from the processors, that 13.3 13, that 13 cents has already been eroded by half because of the price reductions they're getting. Now, of course, the other thing is that costs are, uh, are escalating all the time. So they've got this impossible squeeze. Um, now, uh, I made a comment in my paper um, that this was the consequence of deregulation and a lot of trouble. Now, I have been attacked for that um, and in a sense, appropriately attacked because I should have qualified that comment. Clearly, it is not just deregulation that's causing the problem. There are other factors as well. And clearly, there were trends before deregulation that was having, which was consolidating and helping the sector. But my view is that deregulation, with the package they got from government for exiting farmers, um, accelerated. But what deregulation failed to foresee, failed to foresee, was the rise in power of the supermarkets because the structure of the industry has changed. There is now much greater concentration of power in the hands of uh, supermarkets. So the fundamental environment has changed since deregulation took place. I, I'm, I was, I'm in favor of deregulation and I would do exactly what they've done. But now things have changed. And unless you do something about the structure of issue, you will never solve the problem for dairy farmers and, if I might say, other agricultural commodities. Now, Your... there's another important overlay with this, uh, is the WTO rules. And what the government is rightfully concerned about is that if you start manipulating the internal transfer pricing, that countries like China could use that to say, there's a breach of the WTO rules. Now, it's complex, but the difficulty with that proposition is that the WTO rules are, be, are not being complied with by almost anyone mm. other than Australia and maybe New Zealand. And everyone is abusing the WTO rules like you wouldn't believe. And when I first came across this issue, I contacted a, co a colleague uh, Professor Gary Sampson at the Business School, who was um, a, uh, a director of the WTO, one of the WTO divisions, but not dairy. And we both looked into this and we both became alarmed at the extent to which Australia, if I might say so, naively complies and almost every other country in the world is abusing it. So one of the reasons why the government doesn't want to act is based on a flawed foundation. And Professor Sampson and I came to the conclusion that this is a major issue facing Australia. And it doesn't just apply to agriculture. Australia plays by the rules in every sense of the world and no one else is. Now I can understand historically why we do that because it's a developing country we need, we need to import capital and we need to export vigorously. And I can understand in the years gone by where that was crucial, but times have changed and their attitude to the WTO needs to change. And what I was very keen for was to Samson be appointed by the government to do a formal review and outline to the marketplace what's, what's wrong and how Australia is being disadvantaged. So just to summarise quickly that what, you've, what you're saying there, you're not anti-free market at all. In fact, you're a free market guy, but your argument is in this case, this market is broken and that's why intervention by the government is justified, as your report says, and those kinds of excuses about um, the WTO rules is overly legalistic because it's ignoring the, the, the real world here. And, and if we want to have a a fresh milk industry, <laughs> uh, which every country needs to have. You can't no, import right. fresh milk, right? You're going to have to address this particular thing. 
So, John, my question, um, you know, I was very impressed with your report when I read it. Um, we're going to go through some of the criticisms in detail in a minute, but just briefly, how was it received more generally? How was your report received more generally? Uh, well, um, most people welcomed it uh, and were optimistic that was a, there was uh, a solution. Um, but there are problems in the, the industry associations in dairy. A lot of people would say they're not serving the interests uh, of the uh, dairy farmer. And when uh, someone emerges that's trying to solve the problem, um, they react um, and they attack. And this just hasn't happened to me, it's happened to others, uh, where they attack the detail of uh, what you've been saying. Now, they're correct. I should have qualified my comment. The problem is not solely about deregulation. That is clear. And all I needed to have done was to have said that. And th the reality is that this is a very, very big issue. And there's been a first class thesis being done uh, for a PhD by someone in Sydney that outlines all the issues uh, associated with deregulation, um, what's been good and what's been bad about it. My proposition is quite simple. Circumstances have now changed. Yeah. We have an industry structure which is unsatisfactory. And I go right back to Adam Smith, who's the father of capitalism. And basically, all his theories are based upon people having adequate choice. And the fact is, the dairy farmers don't have adequate choice and nor do the processes. Now, you're not going to solve that by behavioural mechanisms. You're only going to solve it by structural ones. So just to, um, just for the benefit of the viewer, um, uh, John's report was criticised by uh, Dairy Farmers Australia, um, or Australia, sorry, Australian Dairy Farmers Limited last year. Um, and they made, they made some points um, to factually correct what uh, John Dalson had said in his report, and I'll, I'll mention some of those, but I, but I have to point out, um, uh, John, as you started with, um, a lot of these arguments that dairy farmers or Australian dairy farmers made um, were very self-serving and defensive in a sense because they're in a position where they're the main lobby for the dairy industry, yet under their watch, as you said at the beginning, Australian milk is almost the cheapest in the world. And so um, you have to question their performance as an industry lobby if their, their members are getting the least pay of dairy farmers, almost the least pay of dairy farmers around the world. So what they did is they came back at the report and they, they made points like, um, instead of tracing the decline of the numbers of dairy farmers from 2000 onwards, which was the deregulation era, um, they said decline in the number of dairy farms has been occurring long before and after deregulation, um, which of course you acknowledge is true. It's, it's not, not, that's I, what you're saying, I it's not just deregulation. I agree with all that. Um, I, I don't take exception to um, uh, any, of the, any of the comments they've made. Um, I should have qualified my comment and indicated that it's a much more complex issue than I indicated. But I was covering a huge canvas. And I think the danger about this is that you can, it's very easy to obfuscate some very fundamental and simple yes. issues. The fact is Australian dairy farmers are getting a low amount for their book by comparison to other countries in the world, all of whom are being subsidized. Now, it, and you won't solve it by behavior changes, you'll only solve it by structural change. Clearly, deregulation has had a lot of benefits but it didn't foresee the rise in power of the supermarket. It is as simple as that. And I think you can overcomplicate it. You can confuse up in a way which is sad because what these organisations should be doing is fighting for the dairy farmers. And when someone gets up trying to solve the problem, instead of attacking them on a detail, they should be engaging and helping the conversation. 
not trying to destroy the person doing it. Now, this has happened to others. It's a shame. But dairy farmers are no fools, and they've woken up to this, and this stuff distresses them. Well, the fact remains, John, they, they, they can rattle off statistics that average out the whole industry and claim, well, look, we're doing okay. But you know from the dairy farmers you talk to that average dairy farmers are getting squeezed here and going backwards. That's the, and isn't that what's driven you all along? Well, well, well the bottom line is that the, the dairy farmers are uh, dropping out yeah. uh, and we've lost, lost our export sector uh, and some of them uh, are not doing terribly well. I mean, once upon a time, we had a great export sector. In parts of Australia, we have all the natural attributes like New Zealand to be a good performer in dairy. And the same applies to some of other agricultural commodities. And I worry about the will uh, of the National Party who usually have control of the agricultural portfolio. Because I don't believe they're attacking the problems directly and aggressively enough. And we're seeing as a consequence a lot of distress, which is unnecessary. You, and I believe that if you went down my path, the supermarkets would fall in line and probably immediately increase the price anyway. And the fact is that it's, it's, it's peanuts to them. And the other thing, a lot of research has been done to show the average man in the street is sorry for the dairy farmers and will have no problem about paying more. No problem at all. And again, the fact remains that this is the 10th anniversary of the drop in price to a dollar, which means by definition before 2011, the price of milk was a lot higher than a dollar. And, and I, can't, I, cannot, I, I can't remember people in Australia complaining then that milk was too expensive. We were no. used to paying a significantly higher amount. The, what's happened in the 10 years since is we've benefited from a price structure that has um, bankrupted a lot of dairy farmers. But look, it's it's cheaper than it's cheaper than bottled water. Yeah. And it's and uh, do you know the price of apples has gone up today? Do you is know that... the price for an apple is greater than a, a litre of milk? Is that right? I mean, what's yes? You, you yeah. go to the you go to your supermarket today, and you're going to pay more for an apple in the yard for a litre of milk. And what's happened is the dollar milk has degraded the product in the eyes of the consumer. And when you think of the investment in dairy to produce that milk, all the processing, all the freight, and when have we had a scandal about milk poisoning anyone? I mean, yeah. the safeguards that are built into that sector, both at dairy farm level and at processor level, are incredible. Yeah. And that costs money. Yeah. Yep. And, and isn't it? Why should, why should bottled water be cheaper than, be, be uh, equal to a litre of milk? It just simply doesn't make sense. Yeah. And the other thing you have to remember is that milk is a very critical commodity in our health. It's not like bottled water where there are other alternatives. So the average person understands all this and will have no problem paying more. None at all. No, I agree. The, and, and so when the government has a knee-jerk reaction... Very sad. When the government has a knee-jerk reaction sad. to this proposal because they say we don't want to re-regulate, they're not looking at what you're actually talking about, which is acknowledging the, the market failure, which justifies an intervention, that's your argument, um, because at the end of the day, do we want a dairy industry or don't we? It's pretty simple, um, and it, and you can't let the ideological get, ideology get in the way of that. That's right. There's, there's, it's not a question of ideology where you stand on free markets or not free markets. Yeah. The fact is, the market has failed. Yeah. And Adam Smith would have been the first to say, where a market has failed, you should intervene, and that's the role of government. Um, and I'm a vigorous free trader, but where a market has so fundamentally failed, I think government has to step in. Well, and, and John, I think as we mentioned in our last show when we discussed this, um, 
you and I first got to know each other talking about a parallel question of, of um, banking reform and you can chase the tail of banks all you like and try and, and regulate every single little thing you do or you can look at the structure and address the structure through a policy such as Glass-Steagall separating commercial from yep. investment banking and it's a much simpler approach and much more effective approach. Um, and and it's, it's actually less onerous regulation anyway when you do it that way. A look at the, be prepared to look at the structural issues. Yeah. I accept there's definitely parallels because I think Glass-Steagall could do a great deal for the banking sector. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the um, experience with this case. Dairy industry structure is completely imbalanced. The deregulation has allowed, the, the, con the, the thanks to deregulation, the concentration of, of retail power has completely swamped the, the poor dairy farmer. And that has to be rectified if we want to have a... Well, swamp the process of who in turn. The process is the middleman. Yeah. And one of the tragedies about this is that the processes need volume to be economic. So um, if we're able to export and lift those volumes, then the processes themselves will become more profitable. Um, John, just finally, um, it's been a few months... Uh, since we spoke on this, uh, how do you think the um, uh, industry has been going in those few months? Is it, uh, is it treading water or is it worsening? Um, well, the, um, the processes gave them a pretty poor price for the next 12 months. Um, and they've been waiting for review, but one hasn't come. Um, there are pockets of dairy that are doing quite well. Um, for unique, unique reasons. But I think the, the, the average dairy farmer would, would, be, would be finding it difficult. Yeah. Well, this is a very, very important um, issue. It's, a, it's both important in its own right because dairy is such a crucial industry sector in terms of everything you said, our diets and, and um, uh, the, 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 the staples of, of, of our, of our um, uh, economy. It's important because it, it is representative of one of those, uh, th there are issues that are broader in agriculture that, that um, it has, uh, uh, that has ramifications for. Um, and John, I think, let me thank you for the role you're playing because it's, you, don't, you are not a vested interest in this. Um, you're just someone that's been able to use your expertise and bring it to bear on a subject which you know, uh, obviously people have brought it to your attention, but you, you can think it through and, and the work you've done, I think, has been very, very important. So we'll continue to follow it and support what you're doing, right, because we firmly believe in the principle of let's actually get this in, um, intervention going so we can save the uh, industry. And we'll have you on again in the future um, for an update, but let's hope we get some progress this year. Um, um, so thanks very much for joining us, John. Thank you.